Al Tech in the blue uniforms and LaSalle in the solid home whites. Wayne, you will see LaSalle play that zone defense most of the time. They will change it around, try to play as many defenses to keep Louisiana Tech as confused as they can. LaSalle on the attack, Overton from the outside, Hurd. Dave the rebound, this is Guillory. On the outside, Randy White can hit that. Overton gets the back tap rebound. Break Conlon on the drive against White. Leavers had a shot at it on the tip. White corrals the rebound. Guillory quickly ahead. Well, you see White's out there at the three-point line. He will, as we saw, he will shoot that shot, but he is much more comfortable down low, a little bit closer to the basket. Kennedy Lewis. Byron Newton on the wing. Guillory's the point. He's a converted off guard. White in the paint side of the rim, Lionel Simmons the rebound. A couple of good point guards in this game. Dev Overton, uh, who has the basketball right now, and uh, Gary, he's also a great basketball player. Both of these players were off guards last season, and they have adjusted to the role of point guard this season very well. Our adjustments, one of the reasons these two teams made it this far. Simmons misses on his first attempt. White the rebound. This is Gillery. Newton from the corner. Air ball. Both teams coming out a little tight. Lionel Simmons in the open court. First two points of the game. Well, that's what he does so well. He, he has so many tools. That time he just took the ball from coast to coast. No one picked him up defensively, allowed him to have that pass to the basket, and they will not hesitate to do that at any opportunity. Opening two minutes inside. They can't make it go. The rebound goes to Hurd. This is Overton. Louisiana Tech, it's a, a real good man-to-man -man defensive team. They will over, overplay the passing lanes. Of course, they will allow Liverhurst to catch the ball outside to relieve the pressure. Simmons inside with a second field goal of the game. LaSalle leading 4-0. LaSalle with that zone defense. Tech working the perimeter for the most part. Guillory trying to penetrate against the zone. Newton from the outside for three. The Bulldogs on the board with 17.24 to go first half. Well, Dade had a couple opportunities earlier and did not get them to go down for Louisiana Tech. That time, uh, uh, the three-point shot, of course, did go down. And Louisiana Tech back now in the man-to-man -man defense. Overton. Rebound taken down by Dade. This is Byron Newton. Dade swings away inside. Anthony Dade with authority. Louisiana Tech, they like to get the ball down low inside. Of course, when you have a Dade and a Randy White down there, of course, Newton also is a good inside player. You have to force the ball inside as much as possible. They will do that every opportunity. Doug Overton, guarded by Guillory. Rebound, Dade. Here comes Guillory. From the corner, Kennedy Lewis connects. Another three-point shot that time. And that time, uh, Lewis just backed up and got behind that three-point line. He saw it was wide open, saw the opportunity there, and got it to go down. He hit 11 of 15 three-point shots in the tournament. Rebound White, and we've got our first foul of the ball game. Well, what a job Louisiana Tech is doing on the defensive boards. Every time down for... LaSalle, they're putting the shot up from the outside, and the Louisiana Tech people getting real good rebounding position, defensive rebounding position, and allowing, allowing them only that one shot. Milko Levers hit with his first personal foul. Louisiana Tech on the attack. LaSalle extends the defense to three-quarter court. They'll try to trap out of that. Kennedy Lewis. White hits the step to the baseline. And a foul. I believe it was Craig Conlon from behind. We've seen both teams miss some opportunities down low. This time, White puts the basketball on the floor and takes it in there. Conlon gets over, tries to pick up the charge, but uh, did not get set defensively, and uh, White will go on the line for two free points. Two team fouls now on LaSalle. That's the first on Conlon. Randy White, the senior from Shreveport, Louisiana.
White shooting it at 74% from the free throw line. In addition to being a real good field goal shooter, 60.8% on the season, he's also a pretty good free throw shooter. One out of two at the line. Conlon corrals the rebound for LaSalle. They've been outscored 9-0 since taking a 4-0 lead in the first two minutes of the ball game. Doug Overton, Craig Conlon, the senior, the only senior on the squad. Shelton out high. Newton really putting his strong body on Simmons and not letting him post up down low. Jack Hurd, a freshman, gets inside on Lewis and is fouled. First foul of the game on Louisiana Tech. Kennedy Lewis picks up the first foul of the game for the Bulldogs. You don't really see many, uh, you won't see many opportunities for LaSalle to put the ball on the floor and dribble this close to the basket without getting some weak side help. That time the defense, P.J. Brown, I think it was, had his back to the, to the offensive player and did not get over there, and Lewis picked up the foul. 15 and a half minutes left to go, first half. Jack Hurd from Lippes, Pennsylvania. Makes a pair, he's a good shooter. And as I mentioned, as a freshman, has made the starting lineup. Rookie of the year in the Metro Atlantic Conference. There's the trap by LaSalle. Bulldogs break it nicely. Well, P.J. Brown is in the ball game now for Louisiana Tech. They knew Hurd was going to be a, a real good shooter. They didn't think, though, that he would contribute in other areas that he has contributed for this team this season. Good ball movement here by the Bulldogs. Guillory for three. Guillory will shoot that three-point shot. He is, uh, he's, that's his 22nd three-pointer on the season, so uh, he's used to shooting it from out there. Three three-pointers, Jack, in the early going by Louisiana Tech over that LaSalle zone. Simmons leans in on Newton for two. Well, that was a tough shot. Newton can't play any better defense than he played that time. Of course, he understands that uh, Simmons has made that shot very often this season. Simmons with all three field goals for LaSalle. Newton gets it away to Guillory, almost a dribbling violation there. Almost up and down. Well, I thought he did leave his feet, but one of the uh, defensive players got a hand on him. And a violation, three-second violation coming up here on the Bulldogs. And we got a break of the action. 14 and 28 left to go. We are first half from Vanderbilt. Louisiana Tech leads LaSalle. All night. Brett Guillory. I think you'll see LaSalle continue to give up that three-point shot, or at least a jump shot from the outside, because they are concerned with the inside game, especially the inside game of Randy White. Guillory. There's White. Oh, they surround him. And a partially blocked, it appeared, by Shelton. Overton in transition for LaSalle. Conlon from the corner. Simmons the rebound. And it's taken off by Newton. Well, one of the few offensive rebounds that LaSalle has been able to get so far. Simmons, he won't miss that one very often. Knight. They work it cross court. There's Newton. Guillory's at the point. You see Louisiana Tech very patient in their offense. Of course, uh, they want to get the ball inside. They've had some success from, uh, from there getting the ball down low, but White so far has not been effective down low. Almost seven minutes gone by first half. Here's Conlon. Well, Conlon is going to have to make one of those shots because he is continual, continuing to get that shot wide open from the side. Darrell Knight throws it away to Jack Hurd. Hurd does not have the numbers on his side. Makes a nifty move for two. Well, that was. He took the ball right down inside, pivoted around, and got Randy White leaning the other way and was able to get that one to go in. Three-quarter court pressure. LaSalle extending the defense a little bit here. Newton finds White in traffic, and it's an offensive foul. You're going to see Hurd right here. Real good anticipation to come over and kick that pass off. Then he's going to take the ball to the basket. Randy White does a good job defensively defensively here but still he was able to pivot around into the lane and kiss it off the glass for quick two into the ball game Bob Johnson for LaSalle he provides some offensive explosions on occasion he's the sixth man off the bench one of the premier substitutes in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference yeah he has to be the best sixth man in that conference 
Simmons had it blocked on the play by the freshman P.J. Brown. This is Byron Newton getting the step. Brown, hard off the glass. He was fouled by Simmons. P.J. Brown is very active. He's a freshman, has great legs. He runs the floor very well, does a good job on both ends. Here's the block. You're going to see him come over here defensively, and that's the kind of weak side help I was talking about that you will see from this Louisiana Tech team. Then on the other end, he ran the floor well and was able to get the offensive rebound. He got fouled, and he'll have an opportunity for two, two free throws. Well, Jack, I'll tell you, he had 12 rebounds and five blocked shots in the American South Conference Championship victory over New Orleans. He is a fast developing freshman now. Obviously, they have a lot of hopes for him in the future, and uh, I think he's going to develop. You look at his body, it looks like a, a good body to put some more pounds on. Yeah, yeah. He, he will be a much stronger, physically stronger player than he is right now. Louisiana Tech plays on the lead. 12 minutes left to go. First half. Johnson. There's Hurd. Good ball movement to Simmons. He traps. And look for Johnson against the zone. That time you saw LaSalle in the zone for the first time. Some full court pressure trying to force the turnover, and they did. As Simmons took one step too many. Knight gets it across to Brown. Here's Guillory. Dade on the baseline. Taken off by Simmons. Here to hit the side of the backboard. Overton. Johnson squares up and is fouled by Knight. Well, you can look for Johnson against the uh, zone defense. He has the green light to shoot it at any time from the outside. Of the 503 points off the bench for uh, LaSalle, he has 351 of those points, or 70%. Or <laughs> so, so he has the green light at any time. Bob Johnson, a junior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Long wingspan, quick hands defensively, in addition to what he's able to do on offense. A lot. Hey, he could start for a lot of teams in the MAAC, and uh, he accepts his role as the sixth man very well. Does not pout. He goes in. He plays hard, and he knows he contributes off the bench. And a lot of times, he'll play more minutes than some of the starters. Dave to Brown, back to Guillory. Louisiana Tech sets up quickly, leading by three. They picked up the pressure defensively. They're bringing that zone defense a little bit farther out on the floor to put a little bit more pressure on the guards out high. Dade in the paint had it slapped away by Overton. Picked up by Johnson. This is Overton in transition. Oh, for two. Outstanding move. Oh, it was. A lot of quickness displayed on that trip down the floor. Dade coming right back. Double team. Knight. And they work back to Guillory. Brown inside. A nice move by Brown. We've talked about him already and some of the things that he can do. And that time he put the ball on the floor and took it to the basket very aggressively. The freshman has four points. Here come the Explorers. Over to Dave the rebound up high. Here's Giller. Ten and a half minutes to go first half. Newton from the outside for three. Yes. Pointer of the game for Byron Newton. Well, he's only a 28% shooter from the three point from behind the three point line. 15 of 22 coming into this game. He's made two from out there and looks good on both shots. Hey, Tech is four out of five from three point range. And Jack Hurd adds a tray. The first of the ball game for the South. Here's Newton as again Louisiana Tech gets back offensively quickly. The penetration off oh, Guillory with a good feed to Dave. I'll tell you, Jack, you know, against the zone, that penetration by the point guard means everything for the offense. Well, it's very important, and a lot of times you don't see that very often, especially against a 2-3 zone, because there's usually someone standing right there in the middle to help cut off the penetration, but that time Guillory did it. Lionel Simmons off the mark. Johnson got the rebound once, misses again. Here's Simmons, and he makes it good. Eh? points now for Simmons on four from the field. Well, you saw how important it was for Louisiana Tech to control the defensive rebounds. They had, they've done a real good job of that so far, but that time LaSalle was able to get in there for a couple of extra uh, second chance opportunities. And a foul coming up right here. We've got a break of the action. We'll return with the score. Louisiana Tech 21, LaSalle 18. 
fouled out of a basketball game this season, and it is uh, vitally important for him to stay in the game for LaSalle. Byron Newton off the glass for two. He has eight points of the game for Louisiana Tech. Well, he's playing well. He didn't start the final eight games of the regular season and uh, stepped in during the tournament and has played well. Of course, he is a senior and he has a lot of experience, so it is important for him to be in the lineup as well. Goes over Jen Hurd for three. Oh, no. Rebound, Randy White. He is a load off the board. Boy, what an aggressive rebounder he is. Guillory picked up by Hurd and Johnson. Trapped in the double team. White, the outlet. There's Knight in the corner. D.J. Brown drawing a little bit more attention in that zone now. The young freshman came on and hit a couple of field goals for Louisiana Tech. This is Knight. Knight lost his starting job in the uh, postseason tournament and is coming off the bench. And they hope that his uh, ability to see the game from the bench and get into the flow from that regard can help them put a little more punch in the lineup. LaSalle on the attack, Reed inside, misses on the shot badly. Simmons on the fade off the glass. He has 10 points on five from the field, Jack. Well, he is so smart with the basketball. He uses that pump fake to get the defense leaning, and once he feels which way the defense is going to go, he uses the backboard very well. Daryl Knight leads it short. Here comes Doug Overton. Over Guillory. Rebound ripped away by Daryl Knight. Impressed with the way that guard goes to the boards. Well, I am. I'm also impressed with the defense that both teams are playing right now. Louisiana Tech, of course, doing a great job in the man-to-man. -man. I've seen uh, a few more lob, a few more drives against his own defense of LaSalle, but that time uh, Louisiana Tech got the ball down low to their big guy, Randy White. He picked up the foul. Will go to the line for two. You're yeah, gonna see the lob watching. right here. Yeah, he does a good job once he catches it down there. He has great hands, as you saw, and. Uh, once he grabs it in there, it's very difficult for the defense to get it out without fouling. Well, Jack, we've got seven and a half minutes to go, first half of play, and Randy White has no field goals and one out of two at the free throw line. So that zone has, in effect, bottled him up. He's had a couple of shots at the basket and a couple of good shots. He just hasn't been able to bring it down. Of course, that's what they wanted to accomplish out of that zone defense. When I say they, I mean LaSalle. They wanted to make sure they didn't let Randy White get going, especially early. They've done that so far, but they've given up some points to some other people. One out of two for White. He has two points. Louisiana Tech extending the defense of the backcourt a little bit. Lionel Simmons, right by Newton. Craig Conlon. No goal leavers. Conlon on the block over Dade for two. Well, good job by Conlon posting up that time. He got Dade on his back and. Both of those guys pretty strong down low. He was able to get the two. Knight on the drive, trying to feed Dave. Blocking foul on Conlon. Craig Conlon, second personal. That is six team fouls now in LaSalle. And Speedy Morris not at all happy with the way that call went. Well, Knight turned his ankle on the play. You're going to see Conlon come over and uh, looks as though he has pretty good defensive position. He does move just slightly, but uh, that's one of those calls that could very easily have gone the other way. There's a... Uh, by Tommy Joe Eagles on the bench for Louisiana Tech. Speedy Morris, if we get a shot of it later, we'll show you how the benches are. They are not on the sidelines as is conventional. There you can see them right there. That's the LaSalle bench underneath the basket. The benches are on the end lines. But no coach so far has no. said that he likes that positioning of, the, of, of those benches. Uh, they like being on the sideline where they can uh, relay their offenses and defenses to their team a little bit better. Newton from the outside for three. And the Explorers have the rebound corral. Lionel Simmons. Doug Overton sets up the offense. The sound can close within two or one, depending on the length of shot, so to speak. Well, so often you, you see the great players, and it looks as though they're not going fast. They're not trying hard. And I'm watching Simmons out there on the floor. He is so smooth as Randy White goes up to pick off yet another rebound. Watch this rebound here. He's going up, and this is the way he goes to the basket every time. Look how aggressively he goes up for that rebound. Conlon comes over the back and picks up the foul. Craig Conlon's third personal foul, and that puts uh, LaSalle over the foul limit. Jack Hurd back into the lineup for LaSalle. Craig Conlon has to leave, again with the three personal fouls. Simmons has two. As I mentioned, Conlon, Conlon with three. They're the only players in any semblance of foul difficulty. Well, Conlon gives them so much more uh, than just his 10 points per ball game. He is uh, a blue-collar worker. He 
is aggressive defensively, goes to the floor for the loose balls. That's a big loss with six and a half minutes to go in this game. The freshman P.J. Brown back into the lineup, replacing Anthony Dade for Louisiana Tech. White makes good on a pair at the line. He has four points on four of six shooting from the free throw strike. Doug Overton, there's Simmons out high. Newton's done a pretty good job of making Simmons work for his points, although Simmons does have 10. Hurd gets the step on Brown, and the foul is called on the freshman, P.J. Brown. His first, that is the fourth on Louisiana Tech. Well, Hurd just used his quickness that time. Brown at 6'10", out on the floor trying to guard Hurd, who is 6'6", the guard, and uh, pretty crafty with the basketball. He just gets the step, uses his body well to draw the foul. We're at the Southeast Regional, first round action. Nashville, Tennessee. 6.14 left to go, first half of play. LaSalle guard Jack Hurd at the free throw line. Speedy Morris was saying the thing about Hurd is that he's had bad games, but never two in a row. That's, uh, you know, when you can say that about a freshman, you've got a pretty good freshman on your hands. Yeah, that's a big statement. And as I say, they look for him to come in and give him some help offensively off the bench because as a freshman they didn't think he would start but he has stepped in he's such a hard worker and uh, he's he always gives it his best no matter uh, what the situation you have to give him playing time Louisiana Tech laboring against the LaSalle defense Randy White at the baseline and a foul on Jack Hurd I believe it took the ball away well and uh, you saw the reaction of the LaSalle bench on that call uh, it looks to me as though the defense comes over and plays pretty well right here. White's going to bring the ball down low, something you shouldn't do. And, boy, he just goes in there and picks his pocket. A good defensive play. Unfortunately for Hurd, he picks up the foul. Second personal foul on Jack Hurd, and Speedy Morris has loosened things up, so to speak. The jacket's off, the tie's off. In a moment, he'll have the shirt sleeves rolled up. White misses at the free throw line. He's missed three times there today in the first half. Four-point lead for Louisiana Tech. Lionel Simmons. Rebound Brown. Here comes Guillory. Good feed to White, and he travels. Well, he caught the ball a little bit behind the basket, and he knew he had to adjust somehow to get it out. Look, he does an excellent job, though, of running the floor. There he is. He kind of fumbles it away. He looks up, and he sees up that he's up under the backboard and decides to try to go to the other side. Pass was somewhat off the mark, as you mentioned. There's the turnover story. Well, LaSalle doing a good job against the pressure. Louisiana Tech man-to-man -man defense, and there is a turnover right there. Newton picks the pocket of Hurd. Newton trying to convert. Left it short. Lever is over. Jumped the basketball. Brown tied up by Hurd. Brown comes away with it. The tip won't go for Kennedy Lewis, and I believe he went over the back of Overton to pick up the foul. Yeah, he did, but a tough break that time for Louisiana Tech, and especially for P.J. Brown, because he just uh, was in the right place at the right time. Probably should have been a jump ball called right here. Look at the yep. tie-up right there, but uh, he still comes up with it. Just didn't have the touch to get it to go down. There's Knight coming over the back. Excuse me, Lewis coming over the back. Kennedy Lewis with his second personal foul. Five team fouls on the team, and there you get a look at Daryl Knight back into the ball game. Started most of the season, but again, played a, an excellent role. He struggled late in the season, seemed to find himself a little bit in the tournament. He played well off the bench in the American South Tournament. Over to the baseline. Randy White takes the rebound. White may not be scoring a lot, but boy, you feel his presence off the board. Well, that's the thing about great players. Even if they're not scoring points, they're making other good things happen. And that's the case for both, both of these guys, Simmons and White, because Simmons really hasn't had a great game so far offensively, but he's doing a good job on the defense. We're in the final five minutes, first half. Guillory penetrates from the outside. Knight for three. Well, that's the shot they can get against a 2-3 zone. We've seen them put it up from behind the three-point line many times in this ball game. I know Newton has a couple so far, but uh, that shot will be there. Simmons has it taken away from behind. Newton comes up with the handle. The second time he's picked their pocket. Second possession in a row. Newton's done a good job defensively. He has his hands full, and he has accepted the challenge. Nice good feed to Brown. He had Overton to beat, and Overton wasn't going to stop the 6'10". P.J. Brown, who has a second field goal, six points in the game. 
Four minutes straight up to go, first half. Time out of the floor, the score. Louisiana Tech 33, LaSalle 24. Enters stands the great American home of John Paul Jones. For over 16 years, it's been maintained with Sears Weather Beater exterior paint. Today, we're repainting with new advanced formula Weather Beater, the most durable paint we've ever offered. To protect it through the winters ahead, Sears Weather Beater paint. Preferred by more homeowners for great American homes like yours. If this is the only way you participate in different sports, Navi doesn't want you buying their cross trainers. And neither does the boss. If this is the only kind of basketball you want to play, Avia doesn't want you buying their shoes. Two cars, both under $10,000, but this Ford Tempo has a few things this Chevy doesn't, like power mirrors and door locks, tilt steering wheel, air conditioner and light group, rear window defroster. The Tempo has all these features and it's still under $10,000. And every Tempo comes with one standard feature no Chevy on earth can offer, this. Now 4.9 financing or $500 cash back on Tempo, only at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. From there on, uh, Jack Gibbons, they've handled the ball very well. Well, you see what they've done uh, from the field, especially what they've done from the three-point range. They've gotten 15 points from out there on five of eight. Uh, and you see the 34% for LaSalle, so they're struggling uh, offensively. Rebounds, uh, 23 to 19. Tech is uh, leading in that category. Uh, but it has been a pretty decent game for Louisiana Tech because they have done a good job offensively. Quickly, let's take a look at the individual scoring. There's White with 10 points. He also has five rebounds. Newton with a couple of three-point shots. Dade also has played well, along with Brown off the bench. For the Explorers, well, Hurd with 14 points, including a couple of three-point field goals. Simmons scored most of his points in the first 10 minutes of the ball game. Set for second-half action. Memorial Gymnasium in Nashville. First round of the Southeast Regional. Look at what Tech does when leading at the half. Well, I've been impressed uh, with the way they've played so far, especially defensively, and the job that Newton has done on Simmons. But Simmons is so explosive, he's capable of scoring a bunch of points very quickly. Simmons was held by Byron Newton, first foul of the second half. Well, sometimes it's better to commit the foul on him than to give him an opportunity to score a couple points. You see the reach in by Newton. Uh, that time, but Simmons had the pass path to the basket and would have gotten an easy two there. LaSalle on the attack. Explorers trailing by eight. Opening minute of play. Second half. Simmons gets by Newton for a moment. Heard back taps the rebound underneath the bucket. And Randy White retrieves. This is Guillory. A lot of Simmons shots coming up short in this ball game. Uh, I think the defense, though, has done a good job making him adjust it. Lewis for three, and Kennedy Lewis gets the Bulldogs off on the right foot in the second half. It's pretty much the way they started out offensively in the first half with Newton getting a couple from three-point range. Overton keeps it alive. Simmons for three. The tip for Johnson gets it back in traffic, gets it up to the big guy, Leverst. Johnson for the outside now. White is there for the rebound. As I mentioned, he had five caroms in the first half. Well, Louis, uh, LaSalle that time missed some great opportunities. They haven't been able to get a lot of offensive rebounds. They did that time, but didn't get it to go down. Blocked by Simmons. Here comes Overton. Nicely done on the break. Of course, Over, Overton is uh, is averaging over seven, almost eight, re, uh, eight assists per basketball game. And that time, he elected not to give the ball to Simmons to pull up and shoot the jump shot, the right decision in that case. The lead is nine for Louisiana Tech. White operating over Milko Leverts. Randy White with his fourth field goal has 12 points of the game. Well, he is so strong when he catches the ball down low. I thought Leverts uh, bumped him that time on the jump shot, but he has that wide body, and he was still able to get it to go down. Yeah, he didn't even flinch, did he? Johnson with a chip shot. Guillory the rebound. Guillory had eight assists in that first half. Here's Newton on the wing. Boy, they've got to be careful of him at the three-point line. Good feed. Guillory to Dave tied up in traffic. 
And they call a foul. It's on Bob Johnson, I believe. It looked like he got all ball, but let's see if we can pick it up. Well, really it did, and it looked uh, looked like here again, LaSalle gets a bad break on what appears to be a real good defensive play. And yes, I thought Johnson did have all ball. At the free throw line, here's Anthony Day, a freshman from Ruston, Louisiana, local product. 13.9 points, 7.2 rebounds. They really have high hopes. They feel he can step in and, and fill, at least in part, the shoes that Randy White will leave behind when he graduates in the spring. Well, he's been able to get a lot of playing time as a freshman and averaging 14 points a game. Of course, he can't beat any, get anything better than the kind of experience that he has had. Simmons on the drive. White clears the rebound. Well, I, I like the way White goes up to rebound the basketball. Kennedy Lewis. Newton. Guillory. White has it slapped away nicely by Conlon to Overton. Overton taking matters into his own hands has both field goals for LaSalle here in the second half. Well, he is so good in traffic. Does a good job of keeping the ball down low to the floor on his dribble and uh, pulls straight up on the jump shot. Doesn't go in to commit the foul. Uh, he handles it well. Explorers back to within nine. Bulldogs on the attack. Just over three minutes gone by. We are first, second half of play. First round action in the Southeast Region. Three point try won't go. Newton follows his shot. Well, good job out by following up his, his rebound to get the offensive rebound. White picked it away from oh, Conlon and converted. Well, he does, and I thought White got away with one. Might have been guilty of coming over the back of Conlon. Of course, Conlon with those three personal fouls playing a little bit tentative right now because he doesn't want to pick up that fourth one, but uh, he might have gotten fouled on that. Simmons trying to break free. Good dish. Overton in traffic. Simmons. And it's slapped away in a foul call. No three-second violation call. No foul. Three seconds on the Explorers. Well, you're going to see White right here. Watch how he goes. It appears that he goes over the back of Conlon right there, but he doesn't get called for it. Takes the ball back aggressively to the basket, and that's his game. When he is able to be free down there and, and run around, he is so much more effective. White ran out of real estate. There is coach Tommy Joe Eagles in his fourth season leading the Bulldog program. He picked up his seventh, 70th and 80th win faster than any coach in Louisiana history. So he has been successful in his short stay down at Louisiana Tech. Conlon gives it up to date. A shaky start to the second half of the Explorers. Delaray trying to feed Dade, who was kicked by one of the Explorers, and it belonged to the Bulldogs. Well, they uh, called a kick. I don't know why they didn't reset the shot clock. There's 38 seconds on the shot clock. Of course, anytime there they are, they're going to change it now and reset the shot clock. Hey, I don't really understand that uh, resetting the shot clock on a kick. You know, when you're young, growing up, you teach guys to play defense with all part of their bodies right. and get in the passing lane, and uh, it just seems to be that uh, that's part of playing defense, and they shouldn't really be penalized for it. Tech working the basketball. Guillory from deep for three, a brick. Simmons takes the back tap Garrett. Well, obviously not the shot for Guillory in that situation. Overton on the feed to Simmons. White clears the board. Lewis, good adjustment on that outlet pass. Well, how quick was his hands on that play? Guillory sets up the offense. Sal off rather cool here in the second half. White in traffic, surrounded by explorers. Off the mark on the shot. Simmons the rebound. This is Doug Overton. On Guillory. Rebound fought for and a jump ball indication on the alternating possession as it's tied up. It'll belong to the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. Well, Overton got pounded on that trip to the basket that time. No call by the official. Watch how he gets fouled here a couple times. He got bumped. Well, he didn't get it called. He ran right to the official and said, hey, they're killing me on my jumper. 14.40 left to be played. 
There's a timeout on the floor with the score. Louisiana Tech 48, LaSalle 37. Real involved in, off in the offense, especially here in the second half. Take a look at the uh, field goal percentage. Woof, the sound very cold from the floor. And you have to give the Louisiana Tech defense a lot of credit for that because, uh, especially Newton and the job that he has done on uh, on Simmons, because Simmons just simply not getting as many shots as he normally does. Dade had the force it, and he was fouled. Do the foul on the play. Coming up on Don Shelton, his first. That is the second on the team here in the second half of play. 48-37, Louisiana Tech leading LaSalle. Dade at the free throw line. Wayne Larrabee and Jack Gibbons. We are at Memorial Gymnasium in Vanderbilt. First round action, Southeast Regional, the NCAA. And Dade at the free throw line. Anthony Dade, a young freshman, hits a pair of free throws. Louisiana Tech leading by 13. LaSalle in the white uniforms on the attack. I think, Wayne, it's going to be important right here to get a shot for Simmons. Heard on the drive, and we've got a foul. Simmons is, uh, has really been struggling in this ball game just simply because of the man-to-man uh, -man defensive pressure. As you see Hurd going to the basket right here, he's going to pick up the foul. Uh, but Simmons uh, right now just standing around, not getting a whole lot done. They need to find a way to get him shots. Daryl Knight with his second personal foul. That's the second on the team here in the second half. Almost six minutes gone by, second half of play. Louisiana Tech has played pretty much on the lead throughout this afternoon's game. Overton. Conlon has to come to the floor for LaSalle. The only senior on the squad loses the basketball but gets it back in traffic and is fouled. Guillory reaching in, I believe, is the man they've spied for the foul. It is his first and the third on the team and watch it again. Well, but look how these blue shirts are like mag. That ball is a magnet and it's just drawing them to him to it every time LaSalle puts the basketball on the floor. They're doing such a great job in the man-to-man -man defense. Simmons! Lionel well, Simmons' first field goal since the first half. He has 14 in the game. Well, there's the shot for Simmons, and right now he's a lot more aggressive offensively without the basketball, finding a way to get open to get, a, get the ball. Simmons just one for five, Jack, here in the second half. Guillory on the penetration, lost the handle, and then ran out of real estate. Uh, right now it's an important time for LaSalle because they have an opportunity to uh, they have picked up the pressure some defensively. They have an opportunity to now get this lead down below 10 points with the basket right here. This is Overton guarded by Guillory. Matchup of good point guard. Simmons swings three of Newton for two. The L train on track now with 14 points. Two field goals in a row. Well, right here the last couple of minutes is as aggressive as I've seen him the entire ball game. He knows that this is a stretch where they need to cut into that lead. Tipped away from behind by Overton. Simmons to Overton, head of the field. String of six straight points has brought LaSalle back to within seven. Guillory moves it across at a timeout call by Coach Tommy Joe Eagles and his Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. Well, you see the defense now. The still, it's going to lead to an easy two. Time out on the court, the score, Louisiana Tech 50, LaSalle 43. Once there was a king named Midas. We have 12.49 left to go on LaSalle making a run. There's our first final from the east. Minnesota over Kansas State. Well, what a job Clem Haskins has done oh, with that yeah. Minnesota program. They knocked off some big people up there in Minneapolis this winter. Guillory. And a much-needed bucket for Louisiana Tech. Well, when they've been patient and they've stayed right within their offense and not tried to get in too much of a running game, they've been very successful. Simmons one-on-one -on -one with Newton. On the outside, Conlon has it. Conlon was left unattended. 
Well, of course, when Simmons is on top of his game, the defense has to be a little bit more concerned with him. Dave trying to save it off the shins of Jack Hurd of LaSalle. It'll belong to Louisiana Tech. Now, the point I was going to make is that Simmons now is starting to find it offensively, and the defense double-teaming up on him. It's going to be important for LaSalle to find a way to get the ball to the open people. Blocking foul, I believe, on Craig Conlon, or are they calling offensive foul? Yeah, they're, they're calling an offensive foul. You're going to see Newton take the ball to the basket. He's been pretty successful in pulling up and shooting the three-pointer from the outside. That time, Conlon did a good job of cutting off the baseline. Newton picks up, a, picks up the foul. Conlon didn't do a bad job of acting oh. either, did he? <laughs> of course, Newton is a big guy. It doesn't take a whole lot of contact <laughs> to make a guy Conlon size come flying out of there. Second personal on Newton on the drive. Simmons is fouled here. I like the way Simmons now playing, how aggressively he is playing offensively. Right now, it looks like he understands that this Louisiana Tech team is a good team and how important it is for him to become more involved offensively. There's Newton again, who has done a pretty decent job on Simmons picking up the foul. Third personal on Newton. Heard on the tip of his own shot. 16 for Jack Hurd. Eight and a half minutes gone by. Second half. This one beginning to tighten up. White down low and it's stripped away. Up for grabs and the pile off. The jump ball indication this time. The alternating possession in the direction of Speedy Morris and the LaSalle Explorers. Oh, and Hurd is really aggressive. Look how Louisiana Tech does a good job of getting the ball down low to White, but look how concerned they are with him. There's five white shirts around mm. him down low, and Jack oh, Hurd players tied it up with his legs. <laughs> Everybody going for the floor. Tommy Joe Eagles. Momentum may have switched in the other direction to that man, Speedy Morris of LaSalle and his team. Making a comeback. Down by five. They trailed by 13 here in the second half. Conlon. Simmons posting up over Lewis for two. Uh, he is uh, a great offensive basketball player. And he had the mismatch. He had Kennedy Lewis at 6-4 on him, and Simmons goes 6-7. Of course, he's done a good job of make, uh, forcing Newton to pick up the foul. Newton now yep. on the bench, and uh, with Knight trying to guard him, he can take advantage of his side. That's why Kennedy Lewis is in the lineup. His third three-pointer of the afternoon. He has nine points in the game. Ten and a half minutes coming up on ten and a half left to be played. They're doing a good job of isolating Lionel Simmons against Lewis Kennedy. At that time he got some help from Randy White who came over along the baseline to try to force uh, the, the double team, but White picks up the foul. His third personal, sixth on the team. Well, you see Lewis trying his best to stay with uh, Re uh, Lionel Simmons, but uh, that's a that's a tough job for a guy giving up about three inches. Byron Newton comes back on Jack Evans. He has uh, three personal fouls, and Lewis heads off. Well, uh, you can't do, leave ne Newton sitting on the bench. Simmons going to work. The L train makes another stop. He has 20. Four point ball game. He's really stepping high right now. Away from the ball, we've got a foul called. I believe they've called it on Don Shelton. His second personal third on the team. Well, look at all the blue shirts around him, and you you know you have to be concerned about him, but no one's going to be able to handle him in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and he has the freedom and the ability to put the ball on the floor and create shots, even though the offensive pattern breaks down. Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech playing on the half-court offensively. Randy White doing a good job down low. Look for them to get him the ball. And he is really posting up strong. Knight penetrates. Newton for three. Yes. Well, he has answered the call every time they've needed a big basket. 11 points, his third tray of the game. Under 10 minutes to go. Newton really has his hands full defensively also. So he, is, he has stepped up and done a great job. Simmons had it poked away by Knight. Knight takes it on the back tap. Good hesitation move by Knight on the drive. 
Blocking foul is called. Score the field goal. Simmons, the guilty party on the foul. Well, and it was a good call because Simmons stepped over and he was falling down before the contact was even made. The triple team that time, three blue shirts around Simmons. He comes back to try to play defense, but see how he's moving and already falling before the contact is made. Good call by the official. It was a good move by Knight to get by Overton, and there you see the end of the drive. Yeah, Knight just kind of paused just a little bit there to get the defense to relax just a split second, and he has that quick first step to put the ball on the floor and get himself two points. Third personal foul on Lionel Simmons. Three-point play by Daryl Knight. Louisiana Tech back in front by 10. 9.20 to go. Timeout, LaSalle. We're coming down to crunch time. 9.18 left to be played. Timeout of the court with the score. Louisiana Tech 61, LaSalle 51. The international distance at 21 feet, 900, 260, 6302, or move back to the pro distance, 23 feet, 4 inches, 900, 260, 6303. LaSalle on the attack, trailing by 10. Johnson from the outside, White with good position of the rebound over Shelton. Here come the Bulldogs. Newton's been dangerous in three point territory. Good feed into Brown, and it's stripped away. Johnson comes out of there. But Johnson really hasn't been a factor so far in this game either, but he is capable of shooting the three-pointer, and he wanted it at that time, but the defense is so concerned, they backed up in what looks to be a zone defense to put the pressure down low. Johnson with a brick, and we've got a foul. I believe it's on Newton pushing off on the rebound against Lionel Simmons. Newton's fourth personal foul, and that puts Louisiana Tech over the foul limit, Jack, with 8.40 to go. Well, that's a big foul. There's no question about it. Newton has done a good job defensively on Simmons, but he's also made some big shots. Watch the push-off right here. There's an air ball, and... There's the elbow, yep. yeah. there's the air elbow. He hooks around to try to push Simmons out of there. And again, Lewis back into the lineup. Kennedy Lewis replacing Newton. This creates a mismatch problem now for Louisiana Tech, one they had trouble dealing with earlier in this second half of play. Well, it does. I kind of look for Louisiana Tech at this point to go to some form of zone defense to try to get some double and triple teams on Simmons when he is trying to isolate as he did against the man-to-man -man defense when Newton went out of the ball game a little while ago. Simmons hits his first two free throws of the day, has 22 points. The lead is eight for Louisiana Tech. Brett Guillory on the drive. Oh, what a move. beautiful move by Knight. And that was a big play right there for a couple of reasons. It, it lets Louisiana Tech know that they can get some scoring from some other places. But Knight out of the lineup. Simmons draws the foul on Brown. B.J. Brown, second personal. Lionel Simmons heads back to the free throw line. Well, when you have a player like a Simmons who has the freedom to do whatever he wants to do offensively, they would like him to shoot the ball as many as 30 times per game because they know he's going to make at least 50% of those 30 shots. And uh, so he has the freedom to do that. He's so crafty with the basketball. He does a great job of drawing the foul even when he doesn't get a good attempt. 72%, just under 72% from the free throw line. He's now hit two out of three from there. Just a pair. White the rebound. This is Guillory. I believe Guillory and Overton, the two point guards, have gone all the way here today. Randy White, and the rebound taken down by Don Shelton. A big rebound for LaSalle. Uh, White trying to get involved offensively. I don't know that he scored here in the second half. Simmons on the block. Rebound. There he is, Shelton. They didn't expect a lot of scoring from him, and he's hit his first two points of the game. A key rebound and then a bucket on the other end. But Shelton is a good relief player. Coming off the bench, he gets some quality minutes. He doesn't play a whole lot. Uh, he's averaging only uh, eight minutes a ball game, but all the time he's on the floor, he does a great job. Offensive foul on Daryl Knight. Lionel Simmons had position this time. Well, Seven and a half minutes to go. Watch it again. Simmons is going to step in there and cut off the baseline. Good defensive position that time. Uh, that's not the way Louisiana Tech was able to build up their lead. They did it by passing the ball around and taking good shots, not by putting the ball on the floor and trying to create for themselves. LaSalle on the attack. He 
Explorers trailing by eight. Over ten. The long carom takes down by Simmons. Over Brown. Simmons keeps it alive. Heard inside and among the trees. He has 18 points, and the lead has been shaved to six. Well, a good job by Louisiana Tech to put uh, P.J. Brown at 6'10 on Simmons because that forces him to change his shot around yep. a little bit, but it also gives some of those other guys an opportunity to get in there and work the offensive board. Night off the mark, Simmons with another rebound of the weak side. LaSalle perhaps putting together its run. Johnson to Simmons, the A-train on the block over Brown. Rebound fought for, Johnson kept it alive, but it's taken by White. Well, and a good decision by White to wait for one of his guards to come back and uh, pick up the basketball, namely Gilly, who is the leader, the quarterback for the Louisiana Tech offense. White inside, couldn't quite handle that pass, and last touch by the Explorers. Well, every time White catches the ball or, or they make an attempt to throw him the ball down low, watch how those white shirts come in there to put the pressure on. I don't know if anybody touched it. White might just, might have just lost control of it. Brown. Simmons climbs the board once again. Boy, he has spearheaded this drive of the Explorers on both ends. Well, he has. And that's the kind of game he has every time out. Six minutes straight up to go in the game. The lead is six for the Bulldogs over the Explorers who had the ball. 15 rebounds for Lionel Simmons. Johnson for three. Well, you know he's not going to miss very many of those out there. He is too good of a player offensively. 13-point lead has been taken down to three. Bulldogs trying to hold off the Explorers. Overton almost triggered it loose. Guillory has to cover up. Knight gets it away to White inside. Right, good second effort by White. He is so strong in there. I know I've said that before, and I continue to say that, but uh, it's so important to, that he not only score points, but he gets the rebounds also, and he uses that strong body very well to do that. Tech by five. Over ten. Knight is there for the rebound. Look for Louisiana Tech to come back with Newton here pretty quickly. He uh, has four fouls on the bench, but he needs to be back in the basketball game at this stretch. He gives him a lot of experience. Brown going back door to Randy White, and he's fouled by Shelton. Well, you see what Louisiana Tech has done now. Every time LaSalle makes the run, uh, it's for a couple reasons. Number one is that Louisiana Tech has gotten out of their offensive formation, the patient system that got them going, and that time they get the ball down there to Randy White, and uh, he knows what to do with it when he gets down there. But they've done it defensively. They put the pressure on LaSalle when they try to make the run, but also they become patient once again, and they're taking good shots. Third personal foul on Don Shelton. Randy White at the free throw line. White about 74% from there. 16 rebounds for Randy White in addition to 17 points. Well, he's been quiet offensively here in the second <laughs> half. 18 for White. Johnson for three. Rebound chased down by Craig Conlan, and he stepped on the baseline. Louisiana Tech again on top by seven. Well, let's see if it touches the line. It looks like Collin does a good job. His toe, maybe on the line, maybe maybe not. It was hard to tell from that angle. <laughs> Pretty good look from that baseline camera, though. Four and a half minutes to go. Tech with the ball and the seven-point lead. Dade to White. White on the drive, rejected, I believe, by Simmons or Shelton. Shelton comes up with a basketball. Overton. Conlan. Oh, White the ball. rebound. Oh, man. He is some kind of rebounder. He's a man against boys on the oh, board, is. isn't he? He is. When he wants that basketball, he goes and gets it. And nobody is going to get it from him. White or Dave slips behind Conlan to the foul committed. I believe it's on Johnson who came over to help out. I don't think there's nope, any. No, they're calling it on Conlan. Any question about that one? Well, that uh, slap on the arm sounded out all over, all over this building. Ooh, there it is. 
Jack Hurd into the lineup for LaSalle, replacing Johnson. The foul on Conlon is his fourth. The senior has been very quiet for LaSalle, just two for the field of four points. Anthony Dade at the line, a freshman for Tech. Of course, Louisiana Tech will be going to the free throw line a lot here if it comes down to uh, where LaSalle has to foul to stop the clock, and it's going to be important for him to make them. <laughs> One out of two for Dade at the line. Simmons the rebound. This is Doug Overton. And LaSalle needs a timeout. Three minutes, 51 seconds left to be played. Timeout of the court with a score. Louisiana Tech 68, LaSalle 60. East Regional, Louisiana Tech trying to hang on over LaSalle. play of Randy White's been a key to the success thus far of the Bulldogs. Well, he's, he's done it not only offensively, but he gets every rebound, and he's done this for the last couple minutes of this basketball game. When LaSalle made the run, he has gotten just about every missed shot. LaSalle on the attack. Conlon, good ball movement by the Explorers. Hurd for three. Jack Hurd third three-point field goal. He has 21 points of the game. Well, he has stepped up and made some big baskets. Under four minutes to go. Brett Guillory. White going down low to Dade. Had it blocked. Yeah. And a foul coming up on the lead. And Overton score the field goal. Oh, I am really surprised they're going to give him the basket. I thought the foul occurred down on the floor. I did, too. I am really shocked. Let's see if we can pick it up. We're not the only ones uh, that thought that. Speedy Morris, very upset. He misses the first opportunity right here, actually gets it blocked. Now, there's a foul right there over the back, and he still continues to go on through with it and gets it to go. You see the action of the official right there to count that basket. Dave completes a three-point play. They call the foul on Overton, who reached in on the play. What a big three-point play that was. Coming up about three minutes left to go. Explorers can ill afford a mistake now. I'm still watching the matchup between uh, Newton and Simmons. Simmons, of course, has the ball right now, but Newton has done a great job on him, and there's another turnover that he forced. Ninth to Guillory, and ninth! Daryl Knight off the bench. Ten-point lead for Louisiana Tech. And a blocking foul coming up right here against Louisiana Tech's Daryl Knight, I believe. Well, yep. Here's the steal right here, and I was just talking about the job Newton has done defensively, and uh, Guillory is going to get the ball out on the break and just lay it up high around the rim and give the choice of any one of those three blue <laughs> shirts right there. Any one of them could have gone up and got that one, but uh, the perfect pass by Guillory in that situation. The Knight said, it's my turn. Well, he happened to be the closest <laughs> to the basket at the time, but it was the pass that needed to be made in that situation. One and one opportunity. Knight has four personal fouls now. Foul just prior to this break in action. And Jack Hurd is at the free throw line. One and one opportunity. Hurd 75% from there. One of the officials over at the scores table. I don't know for sure what the mix-up is, but uh, it is a one and one situation. Wanted to know for sure who the foul was on, and they, of course, called the foul on Knight. No, Dade. Apparently, oh, Dade they changed the, the call. And now the official heads back over there. The first indication the officials gave to the scores table was uh, Knight. Yes, it is going to be. Now out they corrected. It. it is going to be Daryl Knight on the foul. All right, that piece of business having been taken care of. Jack Hurd nervously hit the free throw line. Well, I thought it was Knight that was guarding Hurd along the baseline. Maybe someone reached in from the other side, I was thinking. But it was definitely Knight that that had him when he took the shot. We had it right the first time. <laughs> there we go. Hurd makes a pair. 23 in the ball game for the freshman guard. Full court pressure by LaSalle. Guillory. Newton trapped. State. Knight and Guillory both going after the ball. Coincidentally, tied each other up and stepped down the sideline. Well, that's the kind of pressure it's going to take from LaSalle 
uh, the last two minutes of this basketball game. They have to not only do it offensively, but they have to do it defensively also. The yellow train, Lionel Simmons with 24 points. Oh, what a big shot. He makes a lot of them, though. Knight nearly had it picked loose by Conlon. Knight is fouled by her. No, travel the call. And I think that was a good call, the yep. proper call. Knight did shuffle his feet. Speedy Morris trying to spearhead yet another LaSalle comeback. And Tommy Joe Eagles on the Louisiana Tech bench trying to hang on. 2-0-3 left to be played here in this first round game for the Southeast region. Time out of the court. Louisiana Tech 73, LaSalle 67. And we wish to take the opportunity to thank uh, NCAA Basketball Committee Representative Ken Free, Tournament Manager Ken Hudgens, and Tournament Media Coordinator Lou Harris. From Louisiana Tech, Athletic Director Paul Miller, Head Basketball Coach Tommy Joe Eagles and his staff, and Assistant Sports Information Director Tom Burnett. From LaSalle, Athletic Director Robert Mullen, Head Basketball Coach Petey Morris, and his staff and Sports Information Director Mac Yates. LaSalle on the attack, under two minutes to go now. LaSalle trailing by six. Hurd for three. He got half of it back on one shot. Well, you know, Hurd has really stepped in there and has taken some big shots when Simmons has not been able to get a shot off. Louisiana Tech's lead has been sliced to three. Knight into Randy White, the go-to man, and the foul is called. I believe it's Don Shelton's fourth personal foul. Well, they know where to go when they need two points. White does a good job right here posting up. You're going to see him reach in right there, get him across the arm. Easy call for the official, an opportunity for White to go to the line for two free throws. Randy White, two of two in this half. Made good on four out of seven of the first half. Randy White at the line for Louisiana Tech. Makes it a four-point lead. He'll have another. Wayne Larrabee and Jack Gibbons. This is the Southeast Regional Memorial Gymnasium Vanderbilt. Minute 29 to go. And it's a five-point lead for Louisiana Tech over LaSalle. Louisiana Tech, the number nine seed, has played on the lead most of the afternoon. LaSalle, the number eight seed, has made a couple of concerted runs here in the second half. LaSalle in the white jerseys on the attack. Now look for Simmons now to put the ball on the floor and just create something for himself. Uh, Newton picks up the foul, his fifth foul, so he's going to have to go out of the game, but he has done a great, great job on Lionel Simmons. Really made Simmons work for his points here this afternoon, but of course, when you expend that kind of energy and you have to play that kind of physical basketball defensively, you pay for it, and he paid for it in fouls. Leaves the ball game, Byron Newton with 11 points, eight of which came in the first half. I look for Louisiana Tech to come in with P.J. Brown. Now, Brown did a pretty decent job also when he was on Simmons, and uh, he is coming into the basketball game, but what that does, he is a 6'10 freshman. What that does is it gives them a little bit more size on Simmons and forces him to change his shot around. You see Newton there. Newton did a great job in this basketball game. Scored some points, but also did a good job defensively. Simmons at the free throw line. Missed the front end of the one and one. P.J. Brown with the rebound. And apparently an offensive foul. Knight leaned in. That is his fifth personal foul. Well, that was a big call. Knight was trapped. A good job defensively by LaSalle. You're going to see Hurd right there, number 25, and Overton, number 11. They're going to be in there, and that was a good call because Hurd stepped in there and uh, held his position defensively through the charge. Two Bulldogs have fouled out of the game now. With a minute nine to go, Knight leads with 12 points. LaSalle gets the ball back, trailing by five. 69 seconds remaining to be played. Kennedy Lewis will be coming on for Louisiana Tech. Lewis, the 6'4 senior from Martinville, Louisiana. Daryl Knight sits out. He played a fine ball game off the bench. Right, and these are the situations. You see the benches up under the basket. These are the situations where those coaches wish that they were on the sideline because these are the times when they can really, really tell the players on every situation what to do, especially defensively. Simmons has 26 points under a minute to go. It'll belong to Louisiana Tech. That full court pressure by LaSalle has been effective here down well, the stretch. Has. It really has. They've been able to cut down that 10-point lead, and uh, those double teams just like this is what they've done. 
Dade is fouled by Johnson, who reached in. His second personal. One-on-one -on -one opportunity coming up for Anthony Dade. On the guy that you want on the line if you are LaSalle, because Dade only a 56.6 free throw shooter, so uh, not a bad foul at all. Dade has made four out of seven from the charity stripe. There's Speedy Morris, head coach of LaSalle. Dade a freshman, obviously a pressure situation, but he steps up there and looks really, really good on that shot and uh, follows, through, follows through, stays right with it, gets it to go. Dade has 13 points in the game. Makes a pair, 14 for Dade, and once again he restores a five-point lead for Louisiana Tech. Johnson for three. Up high, P.J. Brown, the freshman, to Kennedy Lewis. Perhaps a nail in the coffin here. Explorers now trailing by seven. Conlon on the drive, draws contact and a foul. Well, you really don't want to commit the foul if you're Louisiana Tech. You uh, want to keep that that clock moving. Of course, uh, that's an opportunity that uh, LaSalle probably would have scored the easy two. See a big rebound right there by P.J. Brown and a good outlet pass. Lewis just the recipient of an easy two right here thanks to that rebound and pass by uh, the freshman P.J. Brown. Craig Conlon at the free throw line. Just four points for the senior. Now make it five. 32 seconds to go. Speedy Morris. Coach explores. His team will slap on the full court trapping defense. If this free throw is made. Conlon makes a pair. It's a five-point ball game in favor of the Bulldogs. That full-court pressure has been good for him. Kennedy stopped. Back to Guillory. Guillory looking for help and gets it away to White. 20 seconds to go, and Johnson reaches into the foul, his third. Of course, the Louisiana Tech bench up one in the intentional call, but seen a lot of fouls in the late game, uh, a lot more vicious than that one was, and the uh, intentional foul not called, so uh, you, you don't expect them to get the intentional foul on that play. If you make it look like you're reaching for the ball, they're not going to call it on you, the intentional foul. White has made four in a row from the free throw line here in the second half. And he got off to a real shaky start in the first half from the free throw line. I know at one point he was three of six from the free throw line. 21 points now for Randy White. He has a load of He's rebounds. been a load off the boards, I was going to say. A yes. couple of more free throws. The lead now, 7 points, 20 seconds to go. Louisiana Tech will be going on in this tournament. From the outside, a three-point try won't go for Simmons, and the ball knocked out of bounds. It'll belong, apparently, to the Bulldogs. No, 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 no. 59. There is Speedy Morris. His team may have run out of options here. Guillory plays it ahead. Anthony Dade. Final seconds. Overton lets it go, and that is it. Louisiana Tech playing on the lead throughout. Coach Tommy Joe Eagles. And the Bulldogs beat the Explorers 83-74. Take a look at the action down the stretch. The exclamation point to this victory for Louisiana Tech, authored by Anthony Dade, the freshman. We'll be back with some post-game reflection after these words. Tech, they win here today, playing on the lead most of the way. Randy White, 22 points, did a yeoman's job off the boards, led five Bulldogs. In double figures, balance scoring throughout. Anthony Dade had 16 points. And on the other side of the ledger for LaSalle, Lionel Simmons and Jack Hurd with 26 points apiece had 52 of the 74 Explorer points here in this first round game. We are coming to you from Vanderbilt University, the first round of the Southeast region. Other statistics individually for Louisiana Tech. Randy White, in addition to his 22 points, also had 16 rebounds in the game. And Brett Guillory did an outstanding job at point guard. He scored just 
five points in the game, a three-pointer and a two-point field goal, but he dished out 11 assists and helped in the uh, final moments of the game to get a Louisiana Tech through the LaSalle, uh, to the, through the LaSalle full-court pressure. We'll return with uh, post-game interviews after these messages. 8 of 13 from three-point land for the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. So an impressive win for Louisiana Tech here against the eighth seed. A slight upset, number nine seed, Louisiana Tech beating the eighth seed, LaSalle. And Jack Givens, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, that entire second half, it seemed like LaSalle was making one comeback after another, but they just couldn't quite get over the hump. Wayne, I thought the game lived up to its billing and that the star players for both teams played well. And as you say, I thought that uh, when LaSalle made the runs in the second half, I thought it was important also that Simmons score, but the key to the game might have been the fact that Newton was able to do such a good job defensively on Simmons. He made Simmons work for his shots the entire game. Of course, Simmons scored his points, but he didn't have the 30, 35-point night that they were hoping he would have. So uh, in addition to Shelton playing so well, I thought that Newton was the key to uh, the win for Louisiana Tech. And Jack, you know, Brett Guillory, we mentioned him. He had an outstanding day, I thought, running the team, uh, Louisiana Tech, and against the pressure when they were able to get the ball in the point guard's hands, well, he made things happen. He got them through the, the uh, tough press in that second well, I, half. I think you're right, and especially late it showed because when uh, LaSalle picked up the pressure and pulled the full court up and tried to trap, you, could, you saw the difference when Guillory had the ball and when Guillory did not have the ball. When he had it, he distributed it to the right people. He is another key to the win for Louisiana Tech. All right, thank you very much, Jack Gibbons. This telecast is a production of the NCAA Communications Department. Dave Kaywood, Assistant Executive Director. The executive producer of NCAA Productions is Jim Marcioni. Productions coordinator, Gina McNeil. This game was produced by Jimmy Rayburn and directed by Brian Seip. For Jack Gibbons, this is Wayne Larrabee saying so long from Memorial Gym. I think it's one of the great sports institutions in the country.